Eric Darling here with Darling Data. Feeling, uh, oh, I don't know. Does, does it matter how I feel? Never seems to. The, the, the videos must flow. So here we are. Uh, in, in this video, we're going to talk about, what is wrong with my face? It's like a red, looks like I got smacked. I've not been smacked recently. Perhaps, perhaps to my own detriment. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about optimizer timeouts because everyone seems to think that optimizer timeouts mean uh, your query took a long time to optimize, which isn't true. Oh no, I, oh no, I've given it all away. Uh, <laughs> but before we go in and we talk about these optimizer timeouts, uh, we're going to talk about how you and I can have a, a, a better, stronger relationship. Uh, if, you, if you love this content so much that you feel that as, as, as little as $4 a month uh, might be an, a good way to say thank you for all of these videos, uh, you can subscribe or you can get a membership to my channel at the link below in the video description. It's a wonderful place to contain this, these links and whatnot. Uh, if, if, you if you like this content, even uh, the one-armed man type of content, uh, liking, commenting, subscribing, all wonderful ways to support my endeavors with SQL Server, uh, at least, you know, for now. Uh, if you need any consulting help with a poorly performing SQL Server. Uh, I, have, I have a variety of things that I am pretty good at. Um, if you need something else, please let me know what it is. My rates are reasonable. Uh, for some low cost, high quality, it's a good thing I didn't mess that up and reverse those because uh, low quality, high cost training, I don't know, that sounds like what you get from everyone else. But if you want some high quality, low cost training, you can use this discount code and you can go to that link and you can get all of my high quality low cost training uh, for about 150 bucks for life. Um, if you would like to see me live and in person, if you would like to see me strut about a stage with a microphone quite similar to this one, uh, talking about subjects quite similar to what I talk about here, uh, you can catch both Kendra Little and I co-hosting two days of performance tuning madness, madness, madness at Past Data Summit, uh, November 4th and 5th uh, in Seattle, Washington. Seattle's lovely that time of year. You should see the sunsets over the water thing. There's a Ferris wheel and all sorts of other stuff. Quite nice. Um, quite nice. So, with that out of the way, let's talk about optimizer timeouts because um, this is something that comes up uh, quite a bit in my consulting engagements when people pay me to talk about SQL Server. So, I guess, I, guess, I don't know. Are you, are you stealing from me? Are you getting it for free? Oh, God. Uh, so... When your query passes all of the initial terribly boring stuff that queries uh, have to go through before SQL Server starts optimizing them, like parsing and binding and whatnot, uh, the optimizer makes a first pass to assign this sort of initial starting cost to your query. This is, a, I don't know, sort of a low-level heuristic based on complexity. Things like the number of joins, subqueries, um, I don't know, things like that probably some other stuff. <laughs> so, I don't know. Whatever makes queries more complicated to SQL Server. And it'll assign an initial starting cost, which tells it not an initial time, like, in, like on a clock, but an, a number of steps that it's willing to take in order to uh, come up with a good enough query plan. So uh, some plans are trivial, where there are no cost-based decisions. I've talked about trivial plans on, on the chan before. Uh, some queries are relatively simple, but do have cost-based decisions. That gets you to like the pretty much like the OLTP type queries, uh, where it's just like, oh, yeah, select a customer and their order or whatever. Uh, so that's search zero. Um, some, some queries do require a bit more thought. That gets you to another search phase called search one, uh, where SQL Server you know, is willing to do a little bit, sp spend a little bit more time thinking about join types and ordering and whatnot. Uh, and some require a real big think, you know, one of those you know, gr gra grab, grab a book and head into the bathroom type thinks about how to come up with a good plan for your query. Uh, and sometimes, some queries are real, real bad, and the op optimizer will run out of memory trying to compile a plan for them, and you'll get some thing that says memory limit exceeded. That is what I wrote over here that was slightly cut off on the screen before. I do apologize for that. 
But the initial cost of your query sets what's called a budget. Most people are not aware of what a budget is. It's, uh, it's a, it's, it is essentially your limitation or something, how much you are willing to spend on something. And uh, that initial, that, that, that budget is uh, dynamic and may increase. It will not decrease. Uh, if the optimizer doesn't explore every single possibility, if it does not exhaustively search through every possible combination of things uh, because it spends the whole task budget, that's when it adds this statement opt early abort reason. Timeout. So uh, to kind of show you where you can see um, some of the uh, both initial phases, some of the stuff that I talked about up there, basically, uh, you can look at this DMV called sys.dm exec query optimizer info. And that will show you uh, when you had a, how many times you had a trivial plan uh, and how many times like me, you, you had no plan whatsoever, so just winging it. Uh, it'll also tell you about all the search phases, so search 0, 1, and 2 in here. Um, it'll tell you how much time it spent, how many tasks met it for all these things. Uh, it will also tell you if anything went from 0 to 1 or 1 to 2. So that's what I meant by it sort of being dynamic. Uh, it will also tell you if there are, <laughs> if there have been any timeouts and if there have been any memory limit exceeded on here. Um, it might be interesting to monitor for memory limit exceeded, but, um, you know, I don't think most people are writing queries where that would be of any real benefit to you. So that's where you can see that stuff. Where you can, how, one way you can find queries that have met that optimizer timeout uh, is, um, well, I've written a query here for Query Store where uh, we can look and we can parse out the XML a little bit and we can find uh, queries that have met the optimizer timeout. Now, what's interesting about these is if, I don't know, if we scroll down a bit, there's all these uh, queries that say stuff like MS param in them. There's even this, this crazy XML namespaces query. I don't know who would write it, something that, that insane. But uh, we have all these MS param queries. And if we open up the query plan for them, uh, you can see that these are rather big and complex. The initial cost of this query, though, is 0.89 something something query bucks. So not a very expensive starting query. And you know, if we zoom all the way out, it might be might be fun. Uh, we can see this is a rather large query plan. So clearly, SQL Server didn't you know based on the initial starting cost was like I'll take this many stabs at coming up with a good execution plan. But if I, get, if I go through all this, I'm just picking the cheapest possible one and throwing that out the door. If we look at uh, a more realistic user query, now these are just, of course, these are MS Param, these are Microsoft internal queries timing out. If we look at uh, a, an actual user query, right, and we look at this query plan, we'll see one that's far less complex. There's uh, really only one, two, three joins in it, right? There's an adaptive join from uh, users to comments, there's an adaptive joins from posts to votes, and then there's an adaptive join, oh, sorry, there's a non-adaptive hash join, oops, Ooh, I made a mistake, a non-adaptive hash join to uh, join the results of both of those joins together. So there's like essentially three joins in here. But if you look at the initial starting cost, that is 13 query bucks, or 13, I guess thir almost 13 and a half query bucks. Well, we can be kind and round up a little bit there, make a, make a donation to the the Dar Darling Data Home for Little Wanderers by rounding up a couple cents to the nearest 50. Uh, and if we look at the properties of this, notice the compile time was only 46 milliseconds, but we still see this timeout down here, right? We still see SQL Server saying, I, I ran out of time <laughs> to optimize this query, but what it really did was run out of tasks to optimize that query. So the number of steps that it was willing to take and try to come up with a good execution plan for this query, SQL Server was just like, you know what, uh, 13 and a half query bucks. No, I don't know. I don't I actually don't know how many tasks you get per query buck, or if it's like uh, gated a little bit, because something some things in SQL something inside of SQL Server like memory grants, SQL Server does use query cost as sort of gateways. Uh, for figuring out who will get the next memory grant. So, and, but, but that's bucketed from like 
uh, less than 10, 10 to 99, 100 to 999, 1,000 to 9,999. So maybe there's like, you know, depending on not just like per query buck, but maybe for every like 100 or so query bucks, you get a different number of tasks allotted to you. Uh, I've, never, I've never quite had the temerity or the tenacity to go try and figure, figure that part out. Uh, of course, that, 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 that also might be dynamic even within that. And, uh, I, don't, I just don't want to give you wrong information. So I'm not going to give you any information on that because I don't have any. I don't want you to start thinking the wrong things. But looking through some of the other metrics that we get back from uh, Query Store, uh, we can see compile, optimize, uh, uh, duration, or sorry, duration and CPU. We can see compile memory. Uh, we can see, um, and then some information about the queries, like the number of executions, the average duration of the query, the average CPU time of the query. But this, this stuff over here, slightly less, sorry, this stuff over here, highlighting, thank you, slightly less useful. This stuff over here, for the purposes of what I'm trying to show you, is that none of these spent a very, very long time compiling or parsing or binding or anything, really. Uh, or they didn't even use a lot of memory to do what they had to do. Uh, we see 8 megs of memory for the first query, 31 megs of memory for the second query. And you, if you're like, you know, like a real memory stickler, you're like, 8 megs, we went to the moon on that. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, uh, I, just, I just don't know what to tell you there. Uh, but we can see that we just did not spend a lot of time uh, compiling plans or optimizing plans uh, for these queries. And uh, now that I'm looking at this, I think that I actually uh, forgot to convert those from, uh, from milliseconds to, or from microseconds down to milliseconds. So uh, those actually look a little bit bigger than what they were in the query plan. But you know what? I'm 12 minutes into this thing and we're just gonna give me a slap on the wrist for maybe doing some math wrong and we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna carry on from there. Uh, but hey, it's free at least for, for the majority of you, it's, it's free. So anyway, uh, that's about it for this. Um, just to sort of sum things up a little bit. Uh, when you see a timeout in your query plan, like if you see that your, your optimizer timed out, that doesn't mean that the optimizer took so long trying to come up with a good enough plan for your query that it just, you know, went, just you know, took its ball and went home. Uh, it just means that it tried through a certain number of steps or tasks or its budgeted tasks, and then it said, you know what, I've spent, enough, I've spent enough tasks on this trying to rearrange this query. I, think I'm, I don't think I'm getting anywhere. I think I'm just going to give you this, cheap, this good enough cheapest plan I found so far. So sometimes that's fine. Or rather, actually not even sometimes, most of the time that's going to be good enough. Uh, other times you might need to... Um, I don't know, do other things to influence the optimizer to come up with a better plan. Um, there, there have been some, uh, well, actually, the, I think the, the, the use hints are still not quite functional. There was like an op, op, optimize for analytic query or workload or something uh, hint that I, I, I don't think I've ever really gotten to work. Uh, but then there were some trace flags that would um, expand uh, how long, or rather how many tasks SQL Server was willing uh, to go through to uh, come up with the query plan. So those were, you know, actually I've never actually seen those be useful for anything I was working on, but uh, I'm sure that they were useful for someone because they ended up as trace flags. So some, someone out there probably at like Walmart or, Walmart or SAP really needed them. So, you know, the rest, rest of us low lives, we don't get, we don't get stuff added to the product really nilly. <laughs> uh, lucky to get a working cumulative update sometimes. Anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. Um, I'm going to uh, record some other videos now. Uh, so hopefully uh, the, the key grips and gaffers don't, don't take their balls and go home because we got, we got some work to do today. Anyway, thank you for watching. My rates are reasonable.